comes on physics and math, but the Lunar New Year is happening pretty soon. And so I thought I would do something about ancient Chinese music, because music is often part of our New Year celebrations. Now, when did it start? It started about 5,000 years ago, as legend has it. And the emperor, the yellow emperor, he asked his musician, Ling Lun, if he could develop a musical scale. And the emperor, this emperor, the yellow emperor, loved animals. He was always surrounded with animals. So he said, I want the fundamental note to be the same as the sound of the phoenix bird. Now the phoenix is a legendary bird. And so what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about having a sound that is created by a vibrating tube. Actually, it's going to be a, this is not bamboo, but it's going to be a bamboo tube. Of course, the bamboos have these nodes that are sealed at one end. So this is sealed, this is open. And so when you tap this, you get a note. So Ling Lung went south from the Yellow River, south almost to India, and went into the mountains and he found the phoenix. And then he found a, he cut a piece of bamboo to the right length make the same sound as the phoenix bird. Now, we don't know exactly how long that tube was, um, we think. So I'm going to just pretend it was this long because it's easier for me to do this. And so this is the fundamental note, and it was called the yellow bell. So this is the yellow bell note, and from it all the other notes were derived through mathematics. So what did that math look like? So we have the yellow bell. And in my case, it was this one is 82 centimeters long. The original yellow bell was probably 23 centimeters. No one knows exactly. And so the next one, so here's the yellow bell, and the next one would have to be two-thirds of that, because they wanted to use simple ratios, nothing complex, simply that were in harmony, that were harmonious. So the next one would be two-thirds of that, and it would be like this. It was called the forest bell. And the next one would be two-thirds of that, but there's a problem, because what we have here is the answering bell. The answering bell is half of the yellow bell. It's it's the same note, but one octave higher. So these bells, these tubes, have to fit between this length and that length. And so two-thirds of this is too short. So what happens is it was doubled. So the mathematics was you took the first two, and then you multiplied it times two-thirds. And that was all right. That created this one. But then the next one would be, and as you can see, that becomes four ninths, which is less than a half. And because it's less than a half, what we do is we double it times two. You can work the math out yourself because we don't want to do a long lot of math here. So the next bell became this one. Uh, let's see. Where are we here? This one. So this one, this one, would, it would be two thirds of this, but we doubled it. It's called the great frame. And the next one would be two thirds of that. Well, that works out all right. It, no, no problem here, because two thirds of that is bigger than one half. And then I'm going to move these out of the way because we're going to use those later. And then the next one is. Two thirds of this one, and then double it. And that gave us the five notes or the pentatonic scale. And so these are the notes the yellow bell, the forest bell, the great frame, the southern bell, and the old purified. Now we're going to put them in order because this is not how a musician uses them. You could, but it's a little bit difficult. So we're going to put them in order of length. there, and I'm going to put the answering bell in there too. It 
doesn't quite follow the math though. It's half of this. It's not too, it doesn't follow the two thirds rule too well. And so this scale sounds like this. And if you have an ear for Chinese music, you might say, hey, that has, that sounds a bit familiar. I'll just try something. I'm not a musician. Something like that, okay? And you can see it has a slightly, slightly uh, Chinese sound. Now I'm going to move these apart a little bit and insert two more that, don't, that didn't quite fit the rule. You see, when Western music was developed, they didn't use tubes like this. They used strings. And so, instead of having five notes, they had seven notes inside the octave. So it, it sounds like this. And I think it's so neat that by putting two notes in here, we blend the ancient Chinese scale to the Western scale. Now, China, each time we had a new emperor, and every, there'd been about 35 of them, each time a new emperor, he says, I want a new fundamental new yellow bell because I want it to to be harmonious you know with with the stars with uh, nature and so each year they had a new each uh, dynasty there was a new yellow bell well that was a bit of a problem you know because not only was the and I'm going to use this as an example not only was the yellow bell used for music the length was used as the fundamental unit of measure. And the volume, how much rice you could put in here, was used as the measure of volume. So each dynasty had a different set of measurements. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons it was difficult for technology to develop from dynasty to dynasty to dynasty. And of course, China was probably first to develop wonderful things like the compass, like silk, like tea, like bronze, gunpowder, all of those things were developed long before it happened in the West. And so I hope you enjoyed this little talk about music, the new year, and ancient China. And with that, I want to wish you a very, very happy new year.